Ladies and gents, dear delegates, it's a pleasure for me to invite you to this seminar uh, during the ESPN. My name is Alain Bourdonnet, and I am responsible with uh, Novus uh, Europe and Middle East for the trace element uh, range, a portfolio called Mintrexes. Um, as you have seen, maybe, Novus is not anymore simply a poultry alimate company. It's a multi-species company with a variety of specialties, including trace minerals. We have been exposing five posters linked to trace minerals, which is showing that we are involved in research, and we would like to share more information with you. Uh, dealing with trace minerals, we have been realizing that one concern that most, uh, more and more people are having at the level of nutrition and formulation is about the excretion of the mineral, which are not necessarily well and effectively used by the animal. Uh, this is in relation, of course, with the European legislation we have in our, in our countries. And we have been thinking it would be interesting for you to have some information from people in Europe which are up to date on that subject and we are heavily involved in establishing some, some rules and, and levels. So we have been looking at uh, countries where it's very important, environment is a key concern, and of course we have been towards Holland. And we have been indicated a researcher working in this area. This is a person that will be do, doing the talk today about uh, the constraint in environment in poultry related to copper, zinc, and manganese. This researcher has been studying at the Wageningen uh, University uh, and got there a PhD uh, in um, layer nutrition related to robustness of the, of the laying hands. Uh, this researcher has been then uh, moving to Scott Hort Feed Research, that's where now she is working with for seven years. She is dealing with many topics related to nutrition, additive ingredients, layers mainly, but also poultry and other species. And she has been working recently with phosphorus in laying hands, and I think zinc in turkeys. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this uh, charming researcher with a charming name, Dr. Laura Starr. Welcome all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the nice introduction. Um, I will start today with, uh, I, I will tell you something mainly about uh, zinc and copper in relation to, uh, to environmental constraints in poultry. Um, manganese is of less importance, so that's only, I will, I will show a little bit about that, but not very much. Um, I have to say that I uh, prepared this pre presentation together with my colleague, Dr. Piet van der Aar. Uh, unfortunately, he's not here, but uh, it will be okay. Um, first, I will tell you something about uh, Schotthorst Feed Research and where we are located. And from that point onwards, I will uh, continue with uh, the issues that we face. Um, Schotthorst Feed Research is um, located in the Netherlands. Um, we're now here, ooh, it's a little bit small, uh, in, in Prague, and um, close to it is uh, the Netherlands. Um, we're near Amsterdam, located in Lelystad, and uh, we have uh, here shown our research facility. I will explain a little bit. This are the offices. Here is our uh, dairy house. This is uh, where we house our pigs, the sows and the piglets and the grower finisher pigs. These are our um, small poultry facilities. This is our big broiler barn and here is our big layer facility. And here under you see a part of our dairy herd. Um, as said, the Netherlands is um, it's a small country. We house there 17 million people. Uh, and besides all the people that we have to house, we have also 4 million ruminants, 12 million swine, and more than 100,000 birds, 100 million birds, sorry. Um, all those animals, they produce a lot of manure, and we have to put that on a very small area. Um, therefore, environmental pollution due to a high level of minerals and trace minerals in the manure is a big topic in the Netherlands. 
Biggest concern is uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and zinc and copper. Um, I first will show you a little bit about research that we did on uh, phosphorus excretion uh, recently. We did this together with Wageningen University. Um, you see here we fed uh, laying hens from um, uh, just after peak production until 93 weeks of age with uh, low levels of retainable phosphorus to high levels of retainable phosphorus during the period we, we decreased it step by step. Um, but th these birds always had the lowest concentration of retainable phosphorus and these always the highest one. Um, and if you look to the uh, phosphorus efficiency, then you see that uh, it's shown in the, in the yellow bars that um, the phosphorus efficiency is improved if you feed low levels of phosphorus compared to the higher levels of phosphorus. And if you look to the phosphorus excretion, it's high here and it goes down if you feed lower levels of retainable phosphorus. So this is already an indication that you can uh, decrease phosphorus excretion by just feeding the birds lower levels. If you look to, uh, uh, to copper and, uh, and zinc, you also see that uh, most um, that has uh, come into the soils uh, comes from uh, manure. Um, here you see mineral fertilizer, manure, sewage sludge and compost and the biggest part of the copper and also from the zinc, it comes from the manure. If you look to the different uh, species, you see that uh, zinc and copper in swine uh, is the highest level and uh, poultry and dairy have lower levels of zinc and copper in the manure. These researchers, Rumkens et al., uh, they, they did a study where um, they searched for actions to reduce the zinc and copper levels uh, in, in, a, in a manure, and uh, they were really searching for actions that you could take at a farm level. Um, they, they used uh, four models. The first one was uh, a business as usual model, so that's just uh, we continue as we are doing now. The second model was uh, bringing less manure onto the surface area. Um, so the mineral level in the manure is comparable to uh, the business as usual model, but only the, uh, uh, because you bring less manure onto the surface, also the mineral level will reduce. Um, besides bringing less manure onto the surface, you can also reduce zinc and copper in the feed. Um, that, uh, and uh, the fourth model was uh, besides uh, reduction in feed, also, also to reduce disinfection of copper in, in cows. That's uh, mainly used for the disinfection of the hoofs of the cows. First I will show you something about zinc. The zinc balance in soil. Um, here you see a picture of the Netherlands. Um, you see different colors. Um, the, the red and orange colors are indicating accumulation of zinc in the soil. Um, the more it turns yellow, green, um, the, there's more standstill situation. So the um, supply of zinc uh, onto the so into the soil is uh, more or less. Um, equal to the release of uh, zinc in the soil and in the crops. And if it turns more uh, blue, um, there's less, uh, the release is higher than the supply. So here for the business as usual model, you see that it's quite red and orange. So there's a accumulation of zinc in the soil. If you uh, bring less manure into the surface area, you see that it turns more, uh, more yellow-green, but there's still some uh, red and, and orange. Um, so there's still some accumulation of zinc in the soil. If you uh, reduce also uh, zinc in the feed, you see that um, it turns nicely yellow-green, so this means that there is a kind of standstill situation that the supply is equal to the release. For the copper balance, they did the same. 
you see this one is uh, pretty red. So there's a lot of copper accumulation in the soil. If you um, put less manure onto the soil, onto the surface area, you see that it turns more uh, orange. So there's still accumulation in the soil. If you also reduce the copper level in feed, you see that it turns more uh, orange and um, uh, orange yellow. So still accumulation. And if you also reduce uh, the disinfection of the cows, it turns yellow, green, and uh, this is the standstill situation. So the supply is equal to the release of copper. This uh, picture show that, um, to my opinion, that there's an urgent need to reduce uh, copper and, and zinc in, uh, in, in the manure. And one of the ways to do that is by reducing the levels in the feed. Um, to do that, it's, um, you can think of uh, the dietary levels. Then you have to be sure about the requirement. Uh, you have to know interactions that take place. Uh, and you can make use of uh, face feeding. Um, on the other hand, you can try to increase the bioavailability of the sources. So you can use different uh, sources of trace minerals. And uh, you can use phytase. Uh, I will continue with, uh, first I will tell a little bit about the uh, dietary levels and then uh, how to increase the bioavailability. Um, if you look uh, in literature for the requirements, you see that there is a, a, a really broad range. Um, therefore, I picked um, this study from Youngblood et al. Um, because they did a meta-analysis. So they, um, they, they based their results on, uh, or their requirements on, on uh, a lot of literature. Um, what you see is that uh, for broilers, the zinc requirement is uh, about uh, 74 milligram per kilogram of diet. Um, and for pigs and growing finisher pigs, it's just a little bit lower with uh, 67. And for dairy cattle, it's, uh, it's 25 milligram per kilogram dry matter. Um, and for zinc, these are just uh, the, the, the total amount in the diet. Uh, the numbers given for uh, copper are the added amount. So there's a, a difference between it. Um, for, for broilers, it's uh, uh, 6 milligram per kilogram. And for the piglets, only 4. Um, and for dairy cattle, you can use 21, or that's the requirement. Um, as said, there's a broad range in requirements that you uh, will observe in the literature. Um, I think that's uh, due to uh, that there's just less knowledge on, uh, on the mineral requirements. Uh, we know much more about uh, energy and, uh, and, and protein levels, for instance. Um, it depends on the parameter. Um, probably you will have a different requirement for feed conversion ratio than for, for growth or for egg production. Um, also age will, will affect that and uh, probably uh, the sex of the bird will affect that. Uh, and furthermore, it's affected by other nutrients. There are a lot of interactions between the nutrients. Health will affect the requirements, stress, environmental conditions. So. Yeah, you have to keep in mind uh, that, that these uh, factors play a role in the requirement. And that's also, um, uh, if you look to the functions of copper and zinc, you, you also see that because uh, they, they are needed for a lot of, uh, of functions within the body. Um, for instance, copper, it's needed for the synthesis of hemoglobin, for, for iron metabolism, maintenance of the blood vessels and connective tissue. It's involved in the energy metabolism, oxidative stress, uh, adrenaline, noradrenaline. So this already indicates that uh, due to the functions, it's, it's yeah, and, and the status of the, of the animal, that it's hard to have, have a very strict requirement. Um, and for the same is for zinc. It's needed for cell reproduction, tissue growth and repair. So it's a structural component of enzymes and it's very important in the secretion of hormones and neurotransmitters. And there are more functions, but just, just to, to give you an idea. 
Um, on the one hand, you can find the requirements. On the other hand, you, uh, on the other hand, you also have the uh, EU allowance, so so the levels that you uh, maximum can use in the diets. Um, if you look uh, look for zinc, it's uh, for for mo most um, species 150 milligram per kilogram. Uh, only the non-ruminating calves they can have a little bit higher uh, zinc level if they get milk replacer. Um, for copper, it's uh, in a range mostly of uh, 15 to 35. For for the different species, only piglets have a higher level. Um, and that's because in this uh, species it's really shown that, uh, that it will improve the growth of the animals. But as you see, there's a, a substantial gap between what is allowed and uh, what's probably required. So um, al although the requirements can be a little bit higher or lower than, than shown here, I think there's still... Uh, um, there's still um, a possibility to, to uh, reduce the zinc and copper in the feed and thereby uh, reducing the, the excretion of the birds. But we have to keep in mind that zinc and copper are essential nutrients and we must supply them to the feed. Um, the, the copper and zinc levels in feedstuffs uh, is on the one hand uh, variable um, and on the other hand, uh, it's the, the levels are often too low, so uh, you will feed the birds, if you don't add zinc and copper, you will feed them deficient levels, and this will Im impair the health and the productivity of the, uh, of the birds. Um, on the other hand, if you give too much, then uh, the, the, it's, it's physiologically ineffective. The birds don't need it. And that's for, for most animals. So. Um, this is, for instance, a study done in rats. And as you can see, um, they fed, um, this is um, the, the copper intake per day. And that's shown in the blue line. The red line is what they found in the feces. And uh, the yellow line is the copper absorption, so what the, what the rats used. So you see that it's not, although you give very high levels, the rats didn't use it, especially if you look to the, that's the requirement is over here. Um, it, it has no added value to, uh, to supply the, the copper above the requirement. Um, then you have to think about interactions uh, for zinc and copper. Uh, zinc and copper uh, interact with each other. Um, so uh, if you give a, a high level of uh, zinc, uh, it, it will affect uh, copper negatively and the other way around, and that's because they, um, uh, they, they make use of the same transporters, so there's competition in that. Um, both uh, elements can um, bind to phytic acid and uh, form the, the very stable phytate, um, which makes the, the zinc and copper insoluble. Um, they, they interact with iron and uh, calcium, but also with uh, fiber levels. If you have high uh, viscous diets, it can also affect your uh, copper and zinc uptake. Um, then there are, among the trace minerals, a lot of interactions as shown in this mineral wheel. Um, this mineral wheel is not complete, it's just to, to give an indication. Um, there are more interactions and uh, we don't know all yet, but we have to keep it in mind. And then uh, face feeding, of course we already use face feeding, um, but I think uh, for instance for broilers in, in, uh, during the last phase, you might think of uh, uh, reducing zinc and copper levels because birds uh, have already stored um, a copper and zinc in their body and uh, they, they don't need more storage just in the final phase of, uh, of their life. Um, and we uh, tested this uh, some years ago and we uh, gave uh, birds a normal uh, premix level and we gave uh, half the dose. And what you uh, see uh, for the performance from day zero to 37 that uh, body weight gain 
did not differ, feed intake was not different, feed conversion ratio was not different, and the mortality was not different. So there might be, um, this indicates at least that there is some um, possibility to, to reduce um, the, the, the copper and zinc levels in the last phase of production. Then you can think of uh, increasing the bioavailability. Um, you can use uh, different sources, inorganic sources and organic sources. Uh, the inorganic sources are often the oxides and the sulfates, and these uh, dissociate at a low pH in the upper gastrointestinal tract. Um, and, uh, due to their uh, high uh, dissociation level, uh, they can also uh, interact with other nutrients and uh, can also bind, which make them probably um, uh, insoluble. Uh, on the other hand, you have the, uh, the chelates, so that's a binding of an organic ligand like an uh, amino acid or uh, a protein carbohydrate. Uh, this is bound to the, to the trace element and uh, it gives a more stable complex and it's more close to um, how it functions in the body. Um, if you look in the literature, uh, you cannot always find that the bioavailability is different. Um, it can be because some organic sources uh, do not really differ from the inorganic sources, and it could be that they uh, also uh, dissociate at a low pH, so they are more comparable to the, to the oxides and the sulfates. But often it's a lack of uh, in the study design. Um, such trials, um, you, you have to perform them uh, in a dose response, and uh, you really need a feed that's deficient in, uh, in, in the zinc or copper that you like to study. And furthermore, it's, uh, um, it's at least a good idea to, to have a low uh, level of antagonist in the diet. Um, in this trial, it's uh, nicely shown that you can, uh, can affect the bioavailability by using different diets. Um, here they use different uh, zinc levels in the diet, and uh, here they measure the, the tibia um, uh, zinc level and they uh, compared zinc methionine with uh, zinc sulfate. And what they found was uh, a difference in bioavailability between the zinc methionine and the uh, uh, zinc sulfate, um, that the bioavailability ranged from 117 17 to 206%. So that's quite a, a, a big range. And um, this range was caused by a, a difference in diet composition. Uh, the 117% uh, bioavailability was observed uh, when using a diet with, uh, uh, yeah, it was a, a very pure, uh, purified diet uh, with mainly uh, crystalline amino acids. Um, the other diet that they used was a semi-purified diet based on a soy isolate, and there they had a, a bioavailability of 177%. So already an uh, increase, and the last diet was more, uh, they call it a complex diet, it was a corn-soy based diet, and there they had a bioavailability of 206%. Um, we also did a, a trial in broilers, and um, we also used uh, different um, dose levels of, of zinc. And we, uh, we used more uh, a European diet, so it was more wheat corn based. And we also uh, looked at the, the zinc content in the tibia. And uh, we also observed that the uh, organic zinc source had a higher bioavailability than the inorganic zinc source. And we found a uh, bioavailability of 164%. Um, then you also have to uh, take into account or keep in mind what, um, what parameter you are looking for. Um, in this study they uh, also compared an inorganic and an organic zinc source. And um, for the parameter uh, tibia zinc content, they found a uh, bioavailability of 161%. Uh, but they also looked at the parameter for an um, intestinal expression of a zinc-responsive biomarker, and then they found 
48% bioavailability. Now, this uh, difference is probably caused because the tibia zinc content um, is, is really a storage of zinc, whereas the intestinal zinc responsive biomarker is more indication of the absorption of zinc. Just to show you something about the bioavailability of, uh, of copper. Uh, copper is mainly, um, mainly studied in, in pigs and less in, uh, in poultry, but there are some, uh, some, some studies done. Uh, often the, the bioavailability of the copper sources is lower than, uh, than we observe for the zinc sources. But also the copper sources um, have a little bit higher uh, bioavailability if you use the organic sources compared to the inorganic sources. Here you see uh, a study uh, where they um, added copper in high limits of high levels and um, they measured the copper content in the liver and what you see, the blue line is the uh, organic source, it has a higher bioavailability than the inorganic source. But as I said, these are very high levels and the requirement is more somewhere here. So if you look at the lower levels, you also see that there is a higher bioavailability already than uh, uh, the, for, for the organic source and for the inorganic source. Um, earlier I said that there is uh, antagonism be between the copper and, and zinc. Um, because there's competition for, for transporters. Um, in this study, they uh, looked um, if this interaction uh, could be observed. And um, they used organic and inorganic uh, sources for copper and for zinc. Um, so they had uh, just a control where no zinc and copper was added. Uh, here you see the uh, the inorganic copper source and the organic copper source, uh, inorganic and organic zinc, and all four combinations of uh, the inorganic and organic forms. And what you see is that um, the control treatment has the lowest, uh, or sorry, the highest feed conversion ratio, so it's less efficient. Uh, adding copper, um, inorganic as well as organic improved the feed conversion ratio. Um, best results were observed by just adding the uh, inorganic zinc source, zinc sulfate. Um, also organic uh, zinc improved the feed conversion ratio. And here is the interesting part. If you uh, use um, zinc sulfate and copper sulfate, so both the inorganic sources, you see that um, um, the feed conversion ratio is, is higher than only the zinc source. So this indicates that there is interaction um, between copper and zinc for the inorganic sources. For the uh, two organic sources and also for the organic uh, versus uh, inorganic sources, um, if you combine them, you, you don't see that effect. And this, um, it, it might be that here is some uh, competition for, for uh, absorption, so for the transporters. And um, here there will not be competition because you use an inorganic and an organic form. Just a slide about uh, the bioavailability of uh, manganese. In this study they tested um, manganese sulfate and a manganese uh, propionate um, and here you with these lines they showed that the bioavailability of the organic manganese was higher 139 percent so the bioavailability is higher so you expect that the excretion would also be lower um, what you see here is um, uh, for zinc, copper, and manganese, um, four different levels. So uh, no uh, zinc added, 20 milligram per kilogram, 40 and 80. Um, here for the copper, the same, 0, 2, 4, 8. And for the manganese, 0, 20, 40, 80. And for all, you see that the excretion increases 
when you add more of the um, of, of the zinc, copper, or manganese source. Um, if you look to the inorganic source, and this one, uh, it's best to compare that with the 40 milligram per kilogram. You see that uh, for zinc, um, the excretion is much higher here than here. So this also shows that, there, uh, that the bioavailability of this source is better than for this source. Uh, for copper, you can compare this one with this one, and you don't really see a difference, so you cannot say really much about the bioavailability. Uh, and in this case, you can compare these two bars, and it even seems that the bioavailability of this source was a little bit higher than of this source. But at least it shows that um, if you add lower levels, you can also reduce the excretion just because the birds don't use it. Then um, uh, phytase, um, with phytase you can also increase the bioavailability of your copper and zinc. Um, here you see uh, uh, phytate, and uh, phytate contains uh, six phosphorus molecules, um, and we normally use, um, oh sorry, um, but uh, the, the, the phytate can also bind other components, other nutrients like amino acids, fatty acids, but also uh, the, the minerals and the trace minerals. Um, we normally um, use phytase to, uh, to release the phosphorus. Um, and by, by doing this, we also um, utilize, uh, besides the phosphorus, the other minerals and also the, the amino acids and the fatty acids. So by using phytase, you can increase uh, the, the, uh, the, the use of your zinc and copper. And I think that's nicely shown here in this study. Um, here they um, uh, studied the, the retention of phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and zinc, uh, and um, they added no phytase, or they added 500 FTU of phytase. In this case, they used natufos. And uh, what you see is that in all cases, uh, with the addition of uh, phytase, you see an improvement in the retention. Uh, for phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium, it was in this study uh, around 6%. So there's the difference between this blue bar and this yellow bar. Uh, and for zinc, it was uh, almost 10%. In another study, they, uh, they used uh, 600 FTU of phytase, uh, also the natufos, um, only the broilers were a little bit younger, but there they uh, observed that um, uh, with use of phytase, you food, uh, they found a higher retention of uh, phosphorus and copper with uh, more than 9%. The calcium uh, was improved with uh, 6%, so that was comparable to the previous study that I showed. And uh, here they even found a, a better retention of 53% uh, for, uh, for the zinc uh, content. And EFSA stated that um, use of phytase, uh, and then in, in pigs, uh, and piglets and fattening and uh, fattening pigs and sows uh, can further reduce the maximum zinc content in complete feed by 30%. I couldn't find a statement uh, for poultry, but um, I, I expect to, to have similar effects for poultry. Um, I just showed you that uh, the bioavailability of the um, Sinks uh, of the, the organic uh, zinc and copper sources of, is often higher um, than from the inorganic sources. Um, we're also, of course, interested in the production performance. Um, as you can see here, um, in this study, they used uh, a cop bird and a ross bird. Um, they followed the birds till 52 and 53 days of age, and they um, they uh, gave them an inorganic uh, source, and it was in this case uh, zinc, copper, and manganese, so it was a kind of blend. Um, 
and um, they used a 50-50 a, a inorganic organic source. So they uh, just put 50% of this one and 15% of this chelate. Um, and they looked for uh, the production performance and they only observed uh, for the cop birds a difference in, in body weight at day 52. But no, uh, no difference in feed conversion ratio and for the Ross birds they didn't observe any difference. They also had a look at the breast meat yields uh, in male and female birds, um, same sources, uh, but no difference at all. This is another uh, study where they use different uh, zinc sources, uh, zinc oxide, zinc proteinate and uh, zinc uh, chelate. And um, they uh, looked for daily weight gain uh, in broilers from day 0 to 35 and the feed conversion ratio, but no differences were observed here. Um, in this study, they tested the uh, uh, different uh, copper sources and uh, also different levels. And uh, they compared these uh, treatments also with the uh, antibiotic treatment, and that's because uh, copper um, has at least a name to be uh, uh, bacteriostatic. Um, they used uh, a copper methionine and a copper uh, proteinase in, uh, at a level of 50 milligram per kilogram and 100 milligram per kilogram. Um, as you look to the body weight gain, um, you see here is the control, and by using adding the antibiotic, you see that body weight gain is improved. But also, if you have the, the higher levels of the copper methionine and the copper pro proteinase, you see that uh, they also have uh, a high body weight gain, which is comparable to the body weight gain of the antibiotic treatment. However, no differences were observed at feed conversion ratio. But these researchers also had a look at uh, the microbial population and um, the antibiotics worked as you expect. They suppress the microbial population. So um, the, the total population was reduced, lactobacillus was reduced, E. coli was reduced and Clostridium perfringens was reduced. But if you look uh, especially uh, to the higher levels, um, you see that uh, the lactobacillus in both cases here is improved compared to the control treatment, whereas the uh, E. coli, so this one and this one, is decreased compared to the control one. So also by using uh, the, the, uh, a copper methionine or a copper proteinate, you can, uh, can affect your microbial population. Um, then more on my favorite topic, the laying hands. Um, here you see um, uh, the eggshell breaking strength uh, by use of an, uh, uh, the gray line is an inorganic source and the red line is the organic source and you see that uh, for a large part the eggshell strength is increased and the eggshell thickness can be increased. And also for uh, layer breeder birds, it was observed that um, by using an, uh, an organic source compared to an inorganic source, the total egg production was increased and the number of hatchable eggs was increased. So based on this, I would say that, um, that there the organic sources seems to be a little bit more um, uh, effective for, for egg-laying birds than, than for um, growing birds. So now I'd like to come to my conclusion. We still have to uh, supply essential trace elements to the, to the diets. Or, yeah, here it says feedstuff, but we have to uh, to add them to the diets because uh, feedstuffs are often uh, uh, deficient in, uh, in in supplying them. Um, the EU allowance 
in, uh, is higher than, uh, than the requirement. So there is a gap and uh, I think by just uh, reducing the dietary levels we can already uh, reduce the uh, amount of zinc and copper excreted in the manure. Uh, we can increase the, by the availability by the use of phytase. I think uh, it's, it's so common everybody will do, so that's already an improvement. And uh, we can further improve it by use of organic sources. Uh, the organic sources, as just shown, um, will not always improve uh, performance. And as said, uh, I think they are more effective in the, in the egg-laying birds than in the, uh, or at least for production performance, than in the, the, than in the broilers. Um, but they have a higher bioavailability, bio especially zinc, um, and thereby a higher retention and a lower excretion. So it's a way to reduce the zinc and copper levels in a manure. So my take-home message is to reduce the emission of zinc and copper by just lowering the total levels in the diet, but increase the safety margin by the use of phytase and organic mineral sources. Then I'd like to thank Novus for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, my colleague Piet van der Aar for helping me with this presentation. And I'd like to thank you as an audience to come here during lunch and uh, listen to my story. Thank you. I think there's still time for questions. <laughs> Are there any questions? No question from the audience? There is one question. Um, okay. Uh, Eve Nice from INRA. Uh, first, I would like to make a comments. Uh, concerning the equivalency between phytase and zinc in broiler. In the EFSA report, it has been mentioned that the equivalency is lower. You have to the, uh, it's about uh, only one third, so it's only a maximum of 10 milligrams. When you add 500 phytase, you will spare only, so because it's mainly because in chicken, the pH of the gastrointestinal tract is very acidic. And so the zinc is more solubilized, and so you increase the, the, uh, the absorption of the zinc. And in broilers, the main uh, thing which is important for the absorption of zinc will be the dietary zinc. Right? So can, can you be the, a little bit closer to the, the, the level of zinc in the diets will be the main point in, in broilers. But in, in pig, phytase, of course, has a very important effect. Uh, another point I would like to, to underline, and you, you mentioned it a bit, is the fact uh, that the requirement is not, it's not very, it's very ambiguous, the requirement, uh, if you look in the EFSA report, I mean the value is very it's terrible, the variation, and so even the expression, we sometimes added zinc, sometimes total zinc, so it's, there is a real problem. Uh, uh, but I would like to underline the fact that uh, we know that the zinc retention uh, changes uh, dramatically with the age of the broilers. And so, as you underline, there is, it's, it will be more uh, interesting to make the recommendation depending on the age of the, like we are doing for all uh, nutrients. Yeah, for other nutrients. And yeah. another point which will be important is to express the requirement not as a percentage of the diet, because depending on the diet, the plant of, uh, zinc is very variable depending on the mm -hmm. soya uh, you put in the diet. And so it should be uh, added zinc and expressed in, uh, uh, as a milligram per day, not Daily uh, intake, yeah. yeah. But I think for most nutrients that it's uh, more important to look at the daily intake than uh, and that's also for the minerals. I agree. Other more comments or questions for Laura? I'm sure that my colleague has a question. 
Well, it's more or less in relation with what Dr. Nice was mentioning. There is always a kind of um, difficulty to, to understand the differences between what the industry people, nutritionists are, are formulating, doing, and, and the recommendation. Because we are getting to, to have now very detailed recommendation for each trace element, for each age, each type. And practically, how do we do? What, what should be the recommendation to the people? I don't know. I think it, it first re you need more uh, clarification on what's the true requirements of the animals. Um, uh, also under different circumstances, what will be the effect of the environment, stress, uh, but also just uh, what Eve said from uh, uh, what's uh, the, the effect of age and uh, what is um, uh, feed conversion ratio, what do you need for that, what's the requirement for, for optimal growth. So. Um, I think that's the, the first point, uh, but I think for practice, it's um, it's very easy to 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 add minerals. It's uh, they always have a safety margin, and I think that that's at this moment for what we know about the trace uh, elements, it's it's also good to have some safety margin. Um, but it's yeah, it's pretty cheap to add. So it's and and it's also from from. Uh, from years ago that, that it, we just put even higher amounts in it and uh, so we already and, and, and we get this guy, these nice maps that you have been showing about the pollution of your soil yeah. the, the imbalance between zinc and copper okay thank you I have one question so solubility is is an issue uh, fight is so did you see interaction between phytase and organic mineral and eventually organic acid that might increase um, solubility of minerals? Is there something yeah, it, done it, it, on that? What I showed was just the, uh, if, if, you, um, if, if you add the phytase, you will increase your retention. Um, but that's, that's not totally what you like to know, is it? Uh, Probably the studies of retention with phytase has been done with uh, inorganic minerals. If you, uh, combine, oh, so. if you combine the organic yeah, yeah. with the phytase, yeah. and then another element might play, there has been studies in the past that organic acid can increase solubility of the minerals and maybe also availability. Yeah, yeah. So is there a two-way or three-way interaction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always too complex. Good afternoon, Professor Stringini from Brazil. Uh, what do you think about to consider the available zinc and available copper as uh, the, the amount of copper or zinc that you offer? I saw that you showed some experiments when they combined mineral and organic sources. Yeah. And uh, this is the point, they use the total copper, the total zinc or available of these minerals. Thank you. You, um, they, they used uh, uh, the, it was just the added amounts what they what, what you saw so the, 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 the dietary levels were, were even higher yeah no, because I believe that you be more successful and the people more successful they combined the available zinc and we did it in Brazil when we have terrible terrible uh, problems especially to air quality eggshell quality Okay. okay, in in older laying hands, above uh, eight or eighty-five weeks of age, yeah. and I believe the, the, these uh, organic sources of minerals are wonderful for eggshell quality in these cases. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Okay, this was the last question because I think it's placed. Uh, it's it's on zero now. So. Exactly. <laughs> So, of course, I would like to thank you, Laura, once again. <laughs> so, as to me, I would like to thank Company Novos for the nice presentation, symposium, and I would like also to thank, like one of many sponsors, for the sponsoring of our conference from the point of view, as the, from the point of view of organizing committee. Thank you. And now we are continuing in symposium program at 1.30. Thank you very much to Novos. Thank you. Thank you.